fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high yo silver, the Lone Ranger. greatest champion of law and order the early West ever knew, he was thought to be an outlaw in many sections of the territory. This made his work in the cause of justice more difficult, but his courage and resourcefulness were equal to any situation. Return with us now to those thrilling days when the West was young, and adventure lay at the end of every trail. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver! We're heading for Hattiesburg! Away! Young Jimmy Lane and his wife, Laura, were entertaining an unwelcome visitor in their small home in Haleysburg. And... Mr. Clayton, I can't pay you. We got $100, and that's all. If you want to take that and give me some more time on the other 100 I'm sorry. But couldn't you give us just one more month? No, I'm Gosh, sorry. Gosh, I'd pay you, Mr. Clayton. If I could, honest, I would. I've never cheated anybody in my whole life. When you lost at my table, I'd accepted your IOU in good faith. On that IOU, it stated plain that you was to pay me by the 1st of September. Well, tomorrow's the 1st. I can't wait longer. You see, Jimmy? You see what trouble gambling gets you in? Mr. Clayton, what will you do if Jimmy doesn't pay? What can I do? Nothing, I guess. Except to let folks in town know your husband's a welcher so they won't get done out of their money the way I was. But that'll mean my job. Yes? Mr. Clayton, if the express company was to find out that Jimmy owed a gambling debt, they, they wouldn't keep him on for a minute. Well, I've said I'm sorry. But Jimmy should have thought of that before he played cards. Now it's too late. Uh, and I guess there's nothing for it but get fired. I won't be any nearer to having 200 tomorrow than I am tonight. It isn't fair. Uh, I was just thinking. Huh? I'm not such a bad fellow, even though you folks are sort of put out with me just now. Jimmy, I'll tell you what. You're going to give me an extra month after all, Mr. Clayton? Gosh, I'll sure appreciate it, and I give you my solemn promise. Not so promise. fast. That wasn't what I had in mind. No? I was just thinking. Tonight I've invited a few fellas into my place for just a friendly game. You say you got a hundred. Well, why not be a sport? Come on down and join us. Maybe that hundred of yours will turn into double that... Say, that's an idea. Jimmy, no. But, honey... Ma'am, it wasn't my intention to cause trouble between you, but you stop to think it over. You'll see where it's as fair a break as your husband could expect. I'm a gambler. You take most fellas in my profession, they never risk their cash again what amounts to their own money. You see, if I wanted to, I could just make Jimmy hand over that hundred right now. Oh, I don't care. Gambling isn't right. Well, what can your husband lose? If his hundred goes, he ain't no worse off than he is right now, is he? Either way, he stands to get fired. But and he... if he should win, why, then he can pay me off. Nobody's the wiser about him having owed me money, and he still get his job. You can put it any way you like, but what's wrong is wrong, and all the arguing in the world will make it different. Well, I... well, just a second. Mr. Clayton, who's going to be in this game? Jimmy, you, you aren't thinking of playing, are you? I've got to do something, don't I? 
How we eat without a job to pay me a salary? Well, they're all fellas you know. Tom Inkins and Smokey Carter and Mort Busby and, uh, well, let me see. Yeah, and Glenn Tucker. Glenn? I thought you and him didn't get along. <laughs> Shucks, we patched things up quite a while ago. But only last week I heard you say Don't that... pay attention to everything you hear, young fella. Well, you're sitting in or ain't you? Please, Jimmy, don't. All those fellas are honest, Laura. You mean trouble, Jimmy. Gammon always means trouble. Oh, honey, look here. I'll play tonight, but win, lose, or draw, it'll be my last time. I give you my word on it, Laura. The last time. Please. Don't you see? It's our only chance. Can't you see there's nothing else for me to do? Oh, Laura, please don't take on about it. I don't like this any more than you do. Jimmy. Yeah? I can see your side of it. You're set on this. I, I won't say you mustn't, but... But don't ask me to say it's right. I, I can't. I, I just can't. Oh, honey, you're swell. Mr. Clayton, how soon does this game begin? They're likely waiting for me right now. Then just a second. The money's in here, Laura? In, in the top drawer. Yeah. Hey, let's go, Mr. Clayton. Ready? <laughs> you bet. Laura. Yes, Jimmy? Wish me luck. The group of men Clayton had named were waiting at the cafe when he and Jimmy Lane arrived there. It didn't take long for the game to get underway, and for a time, luck ran even. But after several hours... Uh, there. A full house. Three queens and two sevens. By golly, Glenn, let's see you beat that. Sorry, Jimmy. What? Four sixes. Look at them. They beat a full house any time. Yeah. There's 20. Well, it's just you and me again, Glenn. You call him? Sure. There's my 20. What you got? Four trays. But I got a straight flush. Jimmy, this just ain't your night. A straight. What's yours, Jimmy? Just this two pair. And the way you was betting, I'd have swore I had you beat. Give me two cards. There you are. Glenn? Oh, I reckon this time for once Jimmy's got the edge on me. Give me four. Make your bets, fellas. There's the last I got. Fifteen dollars. I'm betting it all. Gosh, kid, I just gotta call you. Well, there's my hand. You got better? That's just enough. What's the matter? Man, I always figured you'd be straight. But you can't tell me you could win time after time like you did tonight and do it honestly. You saying I cheated? You bet I am. And if you don't like it, you know what you can do. I blast you. Oh. Hey, cut it out. There can't be no fight in my oh. place. Close that to quit it. He hit me. I'll show him. Oh. Hey, get him apart. Rig it up before they wreck the place. Grab him there. You get him hard, Jimmy. Let go of me. Let go. Let me out of here. Leave go of my arms. I'll teach him to call me crooked. You'll get outside and cool off. Hey, Jimmy, you better run on home. You're not gone right or go home. Anybody that can't lose like a man can stay out of my place for good. I'll get you for this, Jimmy. I'll get you. Well, well, before I'm through with you, you cheating skunk, I'll fix it so you'll stay fixed. And don't you forget it. Bewildered by the manner in which the poker game had ended and too ashamed to return home immediately to face his wife, Jimmy walked the length of Main Street and was hardly aware of it when he left the town behind. Uh, When Laura hears about this, I lost the hundred dollars. I will never be able to pay Clayton. My job. I wish I knew what to do. I shouldn't have hit Glenn. I shouldn't have. Sorry now. I'll tell him in the morning. Oh, Lord. Hold on there, young fella. Huh? A mask, man. Steady, Silver. Just where do you think you're going? Going? Where? Oh, gosh. Is that town way back there? It is. But how'd I get here? Don't you know? Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I must have walked it, I guess. But I didn't think... The way you were stumbling down the trail, I didn't know what was wrong with you. I pulled up here to find out. Haven't been drinking, have you? Oh, no. No, I... I never drink. Been hurt? No. In trouble? Yeah. No, no. No trouble. 
It's nothing. I, well, I have to be getting back. You want to lift as far as the edge of town? No, no thanks. Just the same. I'll make out. Thanks, though. I, I got to hurry. Tonto! Oh, oh, Scott. Oh, fella. Oh, oh, fella. Oh. You, you talk to fella? Yes. Why him walk? I don't know, Kimasabi, and I'm wondering about the fellow. He acted strangely. What matter him? That's hard to say. He didn't want to talk. Oh. But it was clear something was wrong, even though he denied it. I think I'll remember that fellow, Tonto. It might just happen. We'll meet again. Ah. Well, let's ride on. Come on, Silver. Get him up, Scott. Come on, old fellow. It was shortly after this that the sheriff, accompanied by two grim-faced deputies, entered the cafe. As they walked toward the bar, the crowd noticed the business-like expression on their faces and gradually became silent. The lawman stopped before the bar and... Barkeep! Something for you, Sheriff? Where's Clayton? Huh? I said, where's Clayton? Why, in the front office there, Sheriff. Want I should fetch him for you? I'll tell him... You'll tell him nothing. And you'll stay here. Come on, man. Right. Howdy, fellas. Want to see me? Sit down. You can find chairs. We'll stand, thanks. Where's that door lead to? Where's that? Outside, why? You can go out that way without being seen from inside the cafe, huh? Hey, what's this all about? Is there something wrong? If there is, how about letting me in on it? You'll answer my questions. Why, sure, I can leave that way without going through the cafe. Any law against it? Had it in for Glenn Tucker, didn't you? I did once. Not lately, though. It was heard to say one day you'd drill him. I just said that was past and done with. Hey, you mean... Has something happened to Glenn? Has he... He's been murdered. Within the past half hour. Well, I'll be doggone. And you're the only fellow known to have had it in for him. Did you say he was killed within the past half hour? A dozen fellows heard the shots, but didn't think nothing of them at the time. You're sure of that? Of course we're sure. That's all I wanted to know. Come along. Hey, hold on. I ain't trying to get away. I just aim to prove something to you. Come on out here. Watch him, fellas. Fellas, listen here for just a moment. Who's here that can testify I ain't come through this way within the past half hour? Hi, kid. I'd have seen you. What's up? Hear that, Sheriff? If I'd come out here, somebody would have seen me. How about that other door? They wouldn't have seen you if you'd have gone that way. I'm coming to that. My office faces the street. A window looks right out on it. I'm willing to bet anything you want to name, somebody's seen me through that window inside the office during the time Glenn was killed. I seen you in there, Mr. Clayton. I was watching from across by the feed store. I could see you shatter again the blind where you was working at your desk. I seen the same thing. Did I hear somebody say Glenn was killed? He was. Yeah. Well, then what are you pressing Clayton for? Why don't you go out and get the real killer? We come here because Clayton was the only suspect we had. There ain't nobody else with a motive. Ain't you heard about the fight Glenn had in here with Jimmy Lane? Yeah, Jimmy accused Glenn of cheating and said he'd get him for it. I heard him. Well, reckon most everybody else in here did, too. Clayton, yeah. why didn't you tell me about this? It ain't for me to accuse anybody. Enforcing the law is your business. Hi, there's Jimmy now. He's coming down the walk past the harness shop. Come on! Come on. Jimmy, hey there! What's the matter, Sheriff? Make him tell the truth, Sheriff. I heard him threaten Glenn. I can swear to it, too. We all heard him. Threaten Glenn? Jimmy, I've heard you had a fight with Glenn, that's so? Yeah, but... You that... threatened him like they say? I did, but I didn't mean nothing Where by... have you been for the past half or three quarters of an hour? Huh? Where? Well, I walked out in the country. Alone? Well, sure, but... Meet anyone that can prove you was out of town? Well, just a masked man. Oh, look, Sheriff, what A is... masked man? Jimmy, that's a mighty thin story. Don't suppose you can produce this year, masked man, can you? No. No, I don't suppose I can. Let me look at your gun. I ain't got one. Likely had and threw it away. Well, young fella, you're going to jail. Jail? For the murder of Glenn Tucker. Deputies, take him away. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger drama. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
Now to continue our story. The masked man drew his great white stallion to a stop at the secret camp he shared with Tonto not far from town. Oh, oh, Silver. Oh, boy. Oh, there. Oh. Tonto, I'm glad I went on to town. What happened? The young fellow I met on the trail and spoke to has been arrested for murder. Oh. Who him kill? No one. Then why jail him? Earlier this evening, he had a fight with a man who was murdered. Been heard to threaten him. A uh, who feller get killed? A man by the name of Glenn Tucker. The young fellow I met is named Jimmy Lane. He's a clerk at the express office in town. Uh -huh. The chief reason for Jimmy's arrest was the fact that he couldn't account for himself at the time the killing must have occurred. Uh. But at the time of the killing was just about the time I was talking to Jimmy. Then him not killer. Right. Naturally, the sheriff doesn't believe his story of having walked out of town. You and I are the only ones who know it's true. The law would never take our word for it. Oh, that bad. We're the only ones who can help Jimmy. Everyone else is convinced he's guilty. And what we do? I overheard enough to know the sheriff had another suspect before Jimmy was arrested. Who, him? A gambler in town who owns a cafe. His name's Clayton. Oh, me hear name afore. What have you heard about him? Oh, Clayton, fella, him heap smart. With an alibi that looks as though it would stand up anywhere. You think him kill him? I don't know. All I know is that Jimmy didn't. And that no one else, leaving Jimmy aside, seems to have a motive but Clayton. Oh, Tonto, you and I are going to find out everything possible about the fellow. His reputation, his friends, his enemies. I want to know what happened at that card game tonight. I want to know the exact details of Clayton's alibi. I want anything and everything that will give Jimmy a chance for freedom. The Lone Ranger, assuming a disguise, spent the next several days in Haleysburg, gathering every scrap of information he could... As the killing of Glenn Tucker was almost their sole topic of conversation, he found the townspeople eager to answer his questions. Uh, Glenn and Jimmy? Yes. Well, to tell the truth, stranger, up to the time they had that fight, they'd always been right good friends. You were watching that poker game? From beginning to end. And you know, now, now that I come to think of it, that was a funny thing. Every hand that Glenn won from Jimmy was one that had been dealt by Clayton. Did I see Clayton in his office during the time Glenn was killed? Why, sure I did. I could see his shadow again the blind just as plain as I can see you now. Later, the Lone Ranger rejoined Tonto at their camp. Tonto, I learned plenty in town. Huh? Enough to be almost positive that Clayton planned that fight between Jimmy and Glenn. And how him do that? Clayton's a professional gambler. He knows all the tricks of the game. He could easily have arranged it so that Jimmy would lose. And lose time after time to Glenn. Huh. No one suspects a man of cheating at cards unless he wins himself. By letting Glenn win from Jimmy, he took suspicion from himself. Made it look as though Glenn might have cheated. Not right. Knowing Jimmy, Clayton realized that sooner or later he'd lose his temper. He knew there'd be a fight. After Glenn's death, people would remember that fight. It established a motive that implicated Jimmy. And that heap smart. Another thing. Clayton's airtight alibi isn't as tight as it seems when you first hear it. How about that? Clayton himself wasn't seen in his office during the time Glenn was killed. The witnesses who claimed they saw him saw only his shadow. Me no savvy. That shadow was motionless. Oh. A man doesn't stay motionless for more than half an hour, Tonto. Even if he were only reading, he'd change position occasionally. Not right. Clayton had no feud with Glenn. There's a door in Clayton's office that would make it possible for him to leave his office by way of the empty lot next door without being observed. Maybe him do that. We can prove that he did, Tonto. We can show that what seemed to be his shadow against the blind was merely something fixed to represent his shadow. Then, Kimosabe, we'll have him. It was during the evening of the next day that an Indian entered Clayton's cafe, paused just within its swinging doors, and stared about him as though searching for a familiar face. Then he seemed to find the man he wanted and made his way toward the far end of the bar. Clayton was standing there with a group of his customers, and then... Why, I can remember when Cal had one of the biggest herd of longhorns. Oh. Huh? Hey, what are you doing in here? Didn't you savvy that sign over the bar there? Oh, me see it. Well, it means just what it says. Redskins ain't served in my place. You better clear out. Me not want drink. Me want talk. Eh? You come. Me want talk with you. Just a second. Who are you? Me name Tonto. Well, Tonto, what business you got with me? Me not talk here. 
Fellers, here. Oh, something private? Oh. Well, come on, I can spare you a minute or two, I guess. I'll be right back, fellas. This is private enough, I reckon. Now, what's on your mind? Me want cash. Say, did you get me over here just to beg your blessing? Me not beg. Me want cash or tonto talk. Huh? Tonto talk to law. Are you loco? You tell law you not leave office. Tonto see you. Yes, Injun, you talk and you talk fast. What's this all about? When'd you see me? Me see you. Time fella get killed. What difference do you think that makes to me? <laughs> Lawman wonder why you tell lie. Maybe you get jail. You think I'm scared of that? Uh, you plenty scared. Boy, you... You pay Tonto. How much? Hundred dollar. Me not talk. A hundred, eh? That's right. And if I give it to you, how do I know you wouldn't be back again for more just as soon as it was spent? Me not want more. Tonto make promise. Tonto, keep promise. Yeah, I just bet you. You pay? Maybe. Let me think this out. I want you to savvy, though, that you ain't scared me none. I never killed Tucker. Nobody can prove that I did. If I do pay, it'll be just to save myself the trouble the sheriff would make me. Uh. Well, I'll tell you what I do. I'll give it to you in one condition. What that? That just as soon as you get the cash, you leave town. And after you left, you keep your mouth tight closed. Me leave. Then you're going to have the hundred. Where can you be in an hour? You give cash now. I can't do it. I got cash here, but I need it for other things. Either you give me an hour to raise it or do without. Come to wait. Then. Good. And when I give it to you, it ain't going to be where anybody's around to get ideas from it. You know where the old ice house is? The one back a ways behind the cafe here? Uh, me no. I'll meet you there in an hour. Don't let anybody see you go there. Not all right. Them not see me. All right, now clear out. Engines ain't allowed in here, and it looks funny for me to be letting you stay. Come on, get out. You don't have to worry. I'll meet you with a cash. Uh, me. Oh. Why, that blasted red skin. What the red skin want, Clayton? They tried to get you sell him liquor. Take it for cash, you know. I told him to get out and stay out before I report him to the law. You take a hand now, Clayton? No, I'll join you later. Clark, you want something, boss? I'm going in my office. I've got some letters that have to be written. Uh-huh. It'll take me maybe a couple hours before I'm finished. I don't want nobody bothering me, Savvy. Sure, boss, sure. Just like the other night, huh? What do you mean by that? Why, well, I didn't mean nothing special. Only don't you recollect the other night how you told me to keep anybody out that wanted to see you? I just meant... Yeah, yeah, I recollect. Well, I want the same of you tonight. It'll mean your job if I'm bothered. You won't be, boss. Just leave it to me. Good enough. Tonto? Uh -huh. He's meeting you at the ice house. All right. Good, but be careful. Do exactly as I told you. Tonto, do it. And where you go? To Jimmy's home. Steady, old boy. Steady. I can't talk to the sheriff myself, but Jimmy's wife can. Uh -huh. Come on, Silver. Come on. Oh, Silver. Oh, boy. Oh, there. Oh, Listen to what I have to say. In the meantime, Clayton himself had been busy. At last, when certain preparations in his office had been completed, he moved stealthily to the outside door. He opened it cautiously, and when he was satisfied that no one was there to observe him, stepped out and closed the door behind him. when he kept to the shadows and hurried towards the great sheds once used for the storage of ice during the summer. And the sheds were only a few yards distant. Where is that blasted engine? Don't want him to see me. There ought to be someone close by. 
What's that? It's him. They're just inside the door. Will hold me up for cash, will he? Well, that was the biggest mistake that engine ever made. Slowly, the gambler crept toward the figure he saw standing inside the open door of the shed. In his right hand was a knife, the gleam of its metal concealed behind his back. Closer he crept, closer, closer. At length he stopped, gathered himself for a swift leap, then plunged forward with upraised arm. Gotcha! Uh, you not get... Oh, no! What the... This is just a dummy. Fellas, grab him! Yes, sir! Get him, sir! Where you are! Help! My arm! Winged it, I... Served your right, you murdering skunk. You, you shot me. You shouldn't have started to reach for your gun. Ain't nothing but a flesh wound anyhow, worse luck. You'll pay for this. You didn't have to... None of that now. Every man here seen how you tried to kill the engine. Only the dummy he'd fixed up out of old clothes fooled you. You. And if my deputy and that masked man come in there found what I figured they did, I got a notion you're going to jail for a heap more and just attempted murder. What do you mean? You ain't got anything on me. You think I have your mistake and you can't... Just shut up and we'll see about that. Here they come now. Did you find it? We did. I got it right here. You've been in my office. We were, Clayton, even though your bartender tried to keep us out. You didn't have no right to go in there unless I said you could. You can't we steal... We can tell why you didn't want us to go in there all right, Clayton. Take a look at this piece of cardboard we found inside. Boy, you dirty... It's shaped to throw a shadow that looked like yours when it was placed between the lamp and your office. And the window with a shade drawn. Which is how you fixed yourself an alibi for the time Glenn was killed. That ain't so. You can't prove it. You Jimmy's can't. going free. Wait, wait You up. lied to me about where you was that night. That ain't proof. You tried to kill the redskin because you thought he knew too much. No, no, I didn't. And if all that don't add up enough to make a jury think twice, then by thunder, I'll tend to you myself. Clayton, you're through. And all the lying you can do from now to doomsday won't help you one small bit. Come on, Silver. Get off, Scott. Oh, Silver, away! just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated.